This build series is brought to you by Apex Cases and Seagate. Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and part 8 of my video series about my PC build. I'll be giving you a tour of the BIOS for the Gigabyte GA-877N-Wi-Fi motherboard. And I'll also be showing you the Windows 8 installation, an EFI installation is that, at that. Now, I just showed you the system information screen that can be accessed by pressing F9 on the keyboard. And the blue screen of death that you saw was because my USB flash drive for my Windows 8 installation was actually missing a few files. So I had to redo that and it didn't do that anymore. And you will see that once we get towards the later part of this video. So here we are going through the UEFI BIOS, so we are looking at some CPU overclocking settings, which I'm not sure if any of those will actually do anything because as far as I know, the Core i3-3225 cannot be overclocked in any way. But you are able to modify your memory timings for your RAM, so you, if it supports XMP, you could go ahead and choose an automatic profile. Here we have our PC health information, so voltages, temperatures, fan speeds. Under miscellaneous settings, these are miscellaneous settings that I am not 100% sure what those do. Here we are at our basic system information area. You get your BIOS version. This is the latest official BIOS, F2. I believe they have F3C, but that's considered to be a beta BIOS, which I will not go to. Frankly, if the current BIOS that you have is fine, then there's no reason to upgrade. So the time and date was incorrect, so I went ahead and fixed those. Here we have our SATA information, so you can see that our Seagate Momentus XT hard drive, courtesy of Seagate, is detected just fine. Here we have our boot options, so I do have two drives plugged in, the, excuse me, the USB 3.0 flash drive and the hard drive, because we're doing a UEFI installation, the UEFI Windows installation, or excuse me, installer, is the one that's detected. If we don't want to do an EFI installation, then fine, we are able to choose the regular MBR method. So here we just have a number of other boot options that we don't really need to mess, to mess with. And here we have some more info about some of the internals, so you could choose if you want to use the AHCI SATA controller, IDE, or Setup RAID. And where you can see some audio options, USB 2.0 options, options for the integrated HD 4000 GPU. I left it on 64 megabytes because that's what we will have to do for the um, Mac OS 10.8 installation because to get the HD 4000 to get graphics acceleration, the memory setting in the BIOS has to be set to 64 megabytes. And that is it with the BIOS tour. And now let's go ahead and start the Windows 8 installation. So here is the boot screen for the BIOS. And now we're just going to go ahead and choose UEFI for my USB flash drive. Now the flash drive is actually the Kingston HyperX USB 3.0 Data Traveler flash drive. So it's very fast. Although I'm not too sure if the Windows 8 installer actually utilizes USB 3.0. So Regardless, an installation from a USB flash drive for, uh, excuse me, for Windows 8 typically takes about 10 minutes from when you get to the first screen of the installer to the desktop or Metro interface in this case. So here we are at the first screen for Windows setup. Just gonna click on next, click on install now. So right here I'm entering my key for Windows 8, which I'm going to go ahead and skip. Now it's time to accept the Microsoft Software License Agreement, go to Custom Install, and now we have our clean hard drive, so we just have to click on it, go to New, click on OK, and it's going to make a couple of extra partitions because it's just the way EFI works. So now that we have our hard drive set up, we just need to click on Next and the installation will continue. Now that all of the necessary Windows files for the installation have been copied from the USB drive over to the hard drive, it's time to go ahead and restart the computer. So you could just wait 10 seconds or click on the Restart Now button in the bottom right to go ahead and do it immediately. So now the machine is restarting itself and the boot screen was very quick. Now when you're dealing with EFI, you now have a Windows Boot Manager as your boot option. So go ahead and pick that. 
typically you don't have to go into the boot selection screen from the BIOS to do that. You sh it should be the first thing that it boots from. So now we are continuing the Windows 8 installation. So this could take anywhere from about, actually according to my video timeline, it should take about three minutes total to go ahead and get set up. The installation is almost complete and the final step pretty much, at least in the Windows part of things, is to go ahead and enter in your basic user information and get some of your basic settings customized, such as the color of Windows 8, the name of the PC, your Wi-Fi connection, and those types of things. And 30 seconds later, here we are at the Metro user interface for Windows 8, and now here we are at the desktop interface, which is the interface that I will be using primarily. So Start 8 will be installed, which basically allows you to bypass the Metro UI when you boot up Windows 8, and it allows you to add the Windows Start menu in the lower left portion, just like all previous versions of Windows. Here I am taking a look at the computer system information. So the processor is perfectly detected. So is the amount of RAM. This is of course the 64-bit version of Windows so that we could utilize all eight gigabytes of RAM. In device manager, we are missing a couple of things. Now Wi-Fi and Bluetooth automatically works. These are using the Microsoft drivers though. So I went ahead and downloaded and installed the drivers that are available for this motherboard directly from Gigabyte's website. So this includes the chipset drivers, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, as well as the drivers for the integrated HD 4000 GPU. Now that I got directly from Intel because it's a newer version from what Gigabyte had on their website. Now it's time to go ahead and show you how quickly Windows 8 boots up on this machine. Now thanks to the combination of the performance improvements in Windows 8 as well as the hybrid hard drive by Seagate, the Momentus XT 750 gigabyte model, Windows 8 boots up from the boot screen to the login screen right here in about five seconds. Now that is great, so you don't have to waste no time at all to get your machine up and running. And as soon as you log in, you can start running applications. And like I said earlier, I do have Start 8 installed, which allows me to gain access to the Windows Start menu in the lower left, as you, as you just saw. And it also allows you to bypass the Metro UI when you log in. If you still want to access it, you still can, so that's no issue if you do want to access those Metro applications occasionally. I did do a Windows Experience Index rating for this machine. Now that all the optimized drivers have been installed, here are the numbers. So for the processor, we get 7.2, RAM we get 7.5. Graphics are probably the weakest point of this machine, but that's to be expected. It's a mini ITX build. It's not built for gaming, so this will be able to handle gaming as I mentioned in the first part of the series. And the hard drive is 5.9. All mechanical hard drives, no matter how fast they spin, it will be 5.9. To get more than 5.9, you will have to buy a solid state drive. But overall, I've been very impressed with the performance in the machine. Everything opens quickly. And that's it with Windows. And now it's time to go ahead and mess with Mac OS X.